Hey guys, it's Crystal. I just wanted to let you know that the following clip is actually an excerpt taken from one of our recent psychic development circles. If you are interested in joining a cool group of spiritual seekers who love practicing and developing their psychic abilities, then check us out at the link below. Now onto the video. Welcome. Um, I'm excited about today because today we are going to be learning an old timey spiritualist technique. I used to actually be part of an old timey spiritualist development circle. And by the way, if you guys have a spiritualist church in your <clears throat> community or in your neighborhood, you should check it out because they often will have a development circle, not unlike this one. Um, usually at least once a month, sometimes a couple times or every week, a couple times a month or every week. But it's just a really good way to work with people one-on-one -on -one in the flesh and in a specific energy. Anyway, I was part of a development circle many moons ago, and this is where I learned this technique called flame readings. First of all, you need something like a note card or a piece of paper. I will say, though, with a piece of paper that you don't want to just have it as the straight sheet. You want to at least fold it in half, if not in fourths, because it's less likely to burn. And that's one thing we should acknowledge. This is a fire hazard, so make sure you don't burn your house down doing this particular technique. I like note cards, and also you can use cardboard, which is thicker, and so therefore less likely to catch on fire. The next thing you need is a flame source. So I know I had told you guys that a couple times today. We've got a candle with a flame, and we'll be using this for our particular exercise. And after that, what you need is an intention, essentially a question, something that you'd like to ask spirit and receive an answer around or some illumination around. I would say, especially when you're beginning, that you want to keep it a bit general. Like, what would you have to say to me, spirit, or are my emissaries around, or is there a message that you'd like me to know? Just keep it general and then do the technique. Now, the technique requires that you take your note card or whatever it is that you're gonna use, and you pass it through the flame of the candle. Now, some people teach to just do it three times, passing it through three times right through the center of the candle. I do it a little differently. I just allow myself to intuitively pass it through the flame as many times as I like, um, kind of almost like automatic writing if you do that. You know, you kind of just let your hand flow. You allow spirit to kind of tell you how many times to pass it through the flame and whether you want to do it a straight line or you want to do it a circle or you want to do it a spiral or however you want to do it. Follow that flow so that you can get the best message possible. What ends up happening, I'm wondering if that one's better than this one. This one has a bit of a taller flame. So what we do is we pass the card just around the flame. I'm just going to let my intuition guide me. What happens is the flame leaves a carbon imprint on the card. I'll show it to you. I don't have an intention right now. I'm really just doing this to show you how it works. When you're done, you're left with somewhat of an imprint. I just did it kind of lightly. This is a carbon imprint. Make sure not to touch it because then your fingerprint starts to leave an imprint as well and you can start distorting the actual image of it. But what happens at this point, once you have your imprint, and this is kind of faint, it's usually a bit darker. In fact, I'm going to be showing you this one in a little bit, and you're going to freak out. I promise you. <laughs> what happens with this is you want to then begin to scry. I don't know how many of you know what scrying is, but essentially it just requires you to be in a very contemplative state or a state of meditation or receptivity and look at the imagery. Now scrying traditionally involves things like uh, staring into a crystal ball or staring into a bowl of water, kind of fixing your eyes in a certain way, sometimes blurring them just a little bit and then seeing what messages and symbology emerges. And if you would, just make sure you're muted everybody when you come in. And so you kind of stare at the image or you stare at the crystal ball and you see what emerges. And it's the same kind of concept with flame readings, you stare at the images until something emerges that makes sense for you. 
Now, before we do this together as a group, I want to show you because I was playing around with it because this is a fun technique. I want to show you some of the things that came through. I'll, I'll let you know what the questions were that I asked, and then I'll show you what came through, and then we'll actually see <laughs> what the message is. And I think it's going to be pretty interesting. Let me share my screen really quick. This was a flame reading that I did a little while ago. And my intention was just to connect with my mother. I actually had a really cool spiritual experience this week that I am still processing, but a part of that experience did involve my mother. And so I just wanted to see if there was a message that my mother had for me. Now, at first blush, you'd say this just looks like a bunch of smudges. It makes no sense. And so what we want to do is look a bit deeper. And again, it really helps to be in that slightly altered meditative state. And as I was altered, I began to see things emerge. And can you see my cursor right here, everybody? You could not, okay, kill. Cool. What I started to see was this first. It looked to me like a dog. Kind of see his snout here. What looks like the ridge of his brow, maybe an ear. And then I noticed what looked like the dog's neck. So the dog is sitting down. And this looked like a collar to me and also like a leash. And then I noticed this figure here, and it began to emerge like a woman. It looked like a woman whose face was facing the dog, almost nose to nose, if you will, with dark hair and arms stretched out, touching the dog. How many of you can kind of see what I'm talking about there? Yeah. And behind the woman and the dog is this other image. And it just it felt to me just like spirit, like spirit passing through the woman and the dog. And this dog, to me, very thick neck. I have Great Danes, as <laughs> I have big dogs. Looks like my dog, Koa. Koa has this kind of coloring. He's a fawn or kind of a Scooby-Doo kind of dog. And I remembered that my mother has not met all of my dogs. She has not met Sunshine. She has not met Koo. But she did meet Koa once. And I looked for the picture to share it with you. This was my mother two weeks before she passed. And this was Koa, and it was really cool because, first of all, it's hard to smuggle a Great Dane puppy into a hospital, but they were so cool about it. And normally he was a puppy, lots of energy, but as soon as he got on the bed with my mother, he was, this is what he did. He just hung out with her, he slept, and she just pet him and was so calmed by him. And so my interpretation of this particular picture is my mother showing me that she's with Koa, and that she's around us, and that her spirit is around us which was also applicable to me because Ko is getting older. He's going to be seven years old. Danes don't live that long. And in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking about how much I love Koa and how much I want him to just be here forever. So it was just a comforting message to me that my mom is actually with Koa. So you see how at first blush looks like a bunch of nothing. <laughs> but when you look at it a little more deeply, there's a message for me. At least I felt there was. Now, the next image I'm going to show you is another flame reading that I did. And my intention, and here you can see I got my fingerprints on it, so try not to do that. But my question here was actually about uh, my energy modality, which I call attunements. I've noticed over the past year or so that my attunements have been changing. They kind of started more vocal, uh, more tonality involved, but the last few groups that I've had with people, there has been more one-on-one -on -one contact. And I've just been kind of wondering generally, like, where's that going? What are my attunements doing? What am I supposed to be focusing on? And so that was my question when I did this particular flame reading. And as I sat with it, I kind of noticed what looked like a hand, <laughs> a thumb here, you know, and fingers, and here would be the palm of the hand. And what looked kind of in the center, almost like a center of energy or even an eye. And of course, we have we have a chakra right in the palm of our hand. And then from there, just this energy that was coming out of the hand and energy all around the hand. And this was a confirmation to me. The last year of the bliss retreat, my attunements involved me actually placing my hand on someone's heart. And the transmission of the attunement, which is just an energetic adjustment, goes through the palm of the hand and into the heart, and that's how the person receives it. So this was a verification for me, a validation for me, that laying on of hands is going to become 
an expanded aspect of this particular modality for me and it seemed really clear and I got the message okay so that's a second example of and it took me it didn't take me long actually to see the fingers and to see the hand and to understand this particular message whereas with my mother I was looking at it a little bit for a longer period of time now let me stop sharing what I'm going to do now is show you one that I just did this morning this one kind of trips me out, y'all, and I, you're not going to see it right away, but I think you're going to see it. My question here was a question that Paramahansa Yogananda often asked in meditation, and he simply asked, reveal thyself to me, God, reveal thyself to me. Just show me yourself. I want to connect with you. And so my question was similar. Just reveal thyself to me. And this is what came through. Now, again, looks like a bunch of scribbles, but I'm going to start pointing something out to you. What looks to me like a forehead right there. Below that, a nose. Atop that, dark hair. And if you look at it, it kind of looks like me, doesn't it? Look at my nose, guys. <laughs> it kind of looks like my forehead and my nose. And I, it's hard to tell, but right at the top of the forehead, there is light coming out of my forehead. And then there's all these energetic circles coming out from my crown or my forehead. And I, I, this kind of looked like my arm lifted up. It's almost like I'm lying down on a bed or something like that. But can you see my face? Does that not look like me? Anyway, it did to me. <laughs> and so, of course, my, my philosophy is God is within. I mean, so when I say reveal thyself to me, it's also reveal the God in me or re reveal the divinity in me. And so what came through, and I wish you could see it up close, was what literally looked like a snapshot of me and the energy that's around me. That's how powerful flame readings can be. <laughs> so, so outside of the circle, obviously practice and have some fun with it. But here in the circle, what I want to do is do it with you. And after we do it together, I'm going to ask for a couple of volunteers, if you brought your candle in your cards, I hope some of you did, to show us what they got, show us what you're working with, and show us what the interpretation seems to be to you, and, and allow us to have a look at it as well, and intuitively see what's coming through for you. So the question or the intention that I thought we would start with for our exercise is just to see what our spirit guides, our emissaries, would have for us. Is there anything that they have for us? Is there anything that they'd like to say to us? Would they like to reveal themselves to us or perhaps give us some kind of a symbol? Just a message from our spirit guides. So if you do have your, your items, go ahead and get your card or your paper, get your candle. And what we want to do is just take a couple of deep breaths without blowing out that candle. Deep inhalation in. Exhale out. Just do that a few times. And as you continue to breathe deeply, I'm just going to say a prayer for this intention. Spirit, we come before you now with gratitude. Thank you so much for this circle and the energy that is present here. Thank you for all of these ways that we are able to connect with you and understand you more and also to understand ourselves more as well. What we'd like to ask now is for our divine emissaries, those being our angels, our spirit guides, our ancestors, members of our soul group, our friends in spirit, to step forward and give us a message as we use this old spiritualist technique of flame readings. We don't need the message to be anything. We don't have any expectations, but we're just open to hearing and receiving whatever it is that you have for us, and with gratitude, we say thank you in advance. 
for these messages. And so it is. Amen. All right, staying in that deep, relaxed state, we're going to start to pass our card over the flame. I will say the closer to the wick you go, the darker the carbon imprint, the higher up you go, the lighter it is. And sometimes you want to get a mix right in the middle of that. So there's a lot of different shading going on. I'm going to drop my camera, if you don't mind, so that you can see my candle and my card. And again, we're just going to follow the intuition here of your hand and your body. Let's begin to pass our cards through the flame. You can also switch hands if you want to. As long as you want. without setting yourself on fire, of course. <laughs> Take as long as you need. And then when you have your flame reading, your imprint, Let's go ahead and take some time to just look at it. At first, again, it kind of just looks like a, some smudges on a piece of paper. But try to look beneath the smudges and into the layers here. See if you can see any symbols Any faces? Sometimes you might see a number or a letter. So I'll go ahead and show you what I got. And it looks like for at, at first blush, and, and I'm going to spend some more time with this probably at a later time, but it looks like more than one emissary showing up for me with wings. There's some angelic stuff here, wings right there. And just some more in the background, almost in a circle. <laughs> They're in almost in a circle. This is one side of it and going around. It really does feel like a, a circle of beings in this for me. If I were to make a quick interpretation about this, I would say, that I have a lot of emissaries here with me. And I would also say, this is a circle and we're a circle. The more I look at it, the more it's, it might represent the emissaries connected to all of us in this circle, kind of a crowd of beings. Then there's layers to them as well. There's the ones in the front and they're kind of going back. So um, what I'd be interested in doing is seeing a couple of yours, if, if you would be so inclined to share, um, especially if, if stuff's coming through, like you're getting some interpretations around it. 